Hello, my stitching friends. I'm Olivia B. Um, I am back for another floss tube video. It has been a few months. I think my last one was in November, but um, I've uploaded content since then. But it's been a while since I've done a floss tube update. Um, I uh, my craft room is like under a very slow, long construction. Not like wooden nails construction, but like trying to organize. So I took down all my decorations. And I'm going to add those back in last, but then I sat down, there was nothing here, so I've just added random stuff behind me. So let's pretend like it's well thought out and decorated. Anyway, today is uh, March 22nd. It's my birthday, like 4-4. Four, four. And um, I took the day off of work, and so I thought, you know what, this is a good time to film a floss tube. So here I am. Um, I am going to just talk about my cross stitch in this video, and then I will do a separate uh, quilting video. I'm gonna quilt tube, the, the stitching with the sister leaves. I've been doing, making the quilt tube videos. Um, so if you're interested in those, check them out, and also um, you know just search for quilt tube. Um, trying to get more people making floss tube style videos about quilting. So I am definitely here for that, but I will make that video separately. Um, so today we're just gonna talk about my cross stitch for the last few months. So I think I will start out with a finish that I had. I've only had one finish since I've last seen you, but hey, this is how it goes sometimes. Um, this is Wildflowers from Kathy Barrick. And I very much enjoyed stitching this. I stitched this with all of the called for. Um, this is the uh, fabric that it calls for. It's 40 count seaweed from Fox and Rabbit. Uh, it's just gorgeous fabric. And the um, I used the called for silks from Gloriana and um, MPI. The Gloriana ones are variegated, but um, a lot of what you see, like the big spots of colors, like the leaves and the stems, um, I believe those were done in MPI, which is a solid color. So I just wanted to note that because I think it would look the same basically in DMC or very similar. Um, but I did enjoy the experience of stitching it with the silks. Um, I, what I did was outline the whole thing in black because it's outlined in black and I did the outline first and then I just kind of filled it in. It was kind of like coloring. <laughs> it was a very fun experience and I very much need to frame it. Um, I have a white like frame that I got at like a thrift store or an estate sale or something that I have in mind for this and I'm hoping that works out. So. Wildflowers, um, loved that piece. Um, I did, I didn't include like the, the date, and the initials and location. I just left those out. All right, so um, my works in progress or whips. Um, the last time I saw you, this is Houses of Hawkrin Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. And the last time I did a video, I believe I had finished the first block and was working on the outline of the second block. And I have finished the second block. I am really loving stitching this. It's kind of like a, starting a new pattern, you know, every block. Um, and I just love that second block. I think it's so beautiful. I love that house. Um, I am stitching this on, um, I'll suddenly go blank when the camera's on, Overcast, um, 40 Count by Cedar River Linen, and I am just loving the experience of it. I'm stitching it in called for MPIs, um, and, uh, yeah, I'm hitting it up block by block. I actually, I sell the full silk pack in my shop, Hillside Rookery, um, and I, uh, they're 20% off right now. I know that's a shameless plug, but I'm just giving you a heads up in case you want to do the same. Um, I won't keep saying Hillside Rookery. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm kidding mine up block by block. And so if, if you want to do the same, just let me know and I'm happy to help you with that. But um, let me just at least show you the colors because they're gorgeous. They're very rich and just, oh my God. So I really enjoy working on this piece, and um, I look forward to starting the third block soon. So, uh, yeah. So Carolyn from Curious Crafters is stitching this also in the MPI silks on the same overcast from Cedar River Linen, but she's coming from the other side. So that's kind of fun to watch. We're kind of doing like an unplanned sell. So love that project. And I need to kit up the third block. Of course, there's some of the same colors in each block. All right, next one is, um, I didn't get a ton of work done on this, but I did some. It's Reaching Skyward from Modern Folk Embroidery. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. This was the uh, stitch along last year. 
as I've noted before, I'm having kind of a, a little bit of struggle with them um, because it was a, a monthly sal trying to wrap my head around doing it month by month. Um, I, this has taught me that I'm, I, I work off the big picture and do things like motifs, set shapes. So um, I keep meaning to ask Jacob if he, if he sells this at a format where it's just the big chart. But, um, but despite that, it is just gorgeous and I loving the materials I'm using and um, I just can't wait to have it on my wall one day. So this is where I'm at so far. I am stitching this on, bear with me, 40 count lakeside lin linens and vintage meadow rue. Um, and I've been working on, so I have, let's see, January, February done, and then I'm working on March, April. So I've done my infrastructure um, for April, and um, that that helped me. That's helping me, like my <laughs> wrap my brain around it. There is one row of stitching missing from this piece. There's just like a missing row in here and um, just going with it, not turning back. Um, I figure this piece is so busy that um, it's, it's just, it's gonna disappear and that's okay. I am stitching that, the two colors I chose are Gentle Arts, Tarnished Gold and Storm Clouds. Um, I had a lot of both of these in my stash. I don't know if they're enough for the whole piece. We're just gonna wing it. But um, yeah, they're beautiful and the fact that I had a bunch of them in my stash tells me I love these colors and so they were a good pick and I, I love them on this fabric. So it's beautiful. I Then he came out with the 2024 one that I've been seeing people do and that one is also so gorgeous. But I'm like, don't you, don't you dare. Let me get this one done first. So slow and unsteady progress. Um, I had a new start. This, um, I started this with my friend Maddie as a sow on Christmas. Um, this is 12 Days of Christmas Sewing Roll from Stacy Nash. I've wanted to do this for so long. And um, so we finally started it together and I'm very glad. This is uh, charted in DMC, so I'm using the called fours. And I am stitching, I copied Maddie on my fabric selection. I'm stitching mine on 40 count lakeside linens in vintage sand dune. It's like a goldish color. And I'm just working on all the outlines. Um, so it's not the most exciting so far. It's gonna be really fun to fill in the little things for each of the 12 days. I, the picture's a little, you know, it's kind of hard to see. And then at the bottom, it'll say Merry Christmas with a couple of deer in red. And then there's like an alphabet and the numbers. And then there's, yeah, little things to go in the squares. So I still need to do six more of these squiggly line squares. And then I will start doing the fill in and the fun stuff, so. Um, I don't think I'll make it into a sewing roll. I think I'm going to frame it. Um, and this is a beautiful project bag that Maddie made me from Blackbird Design Fabrics. Thank you, Maddie. Ooh, I keep hitting this thing. Okay. Next up, um, for no good reason, it's in a Halloween project bag, but this is Riley Harbor. Uh, this is by Kathy Barrick. I absolutely love it. I do sell I do sell the silk kits in my shop. I'm just gonna say that, and that's all I'm gonna say. It's it's just the, it's just the called for silk that you need. Um, and because I'm only telling you that because they're on these nice little thread drops. Okay. Um, let me show you. I am stitching this on 40 count lakeside linens in vintage pearled barley. Um, let's keep saying um. And here's where I'm at. So I've been working on all of these houses. Um, I'm a real like stitch by color type of person, so <laughs> that's why they look the way they do. Um, those, um, all, once all those houses are done, I get to go down to the water. Ooh, reflection. You see that big whale and the boats and the fun blue waves. Um, so another one that's just a ton of fun. Um, love working on this. And yeah, really hard. Okay, and then this BAP, Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain by Kathy Merrick. So beautiful. I am um, not stitching it in the call for MPIs. I did a conversion to Oberdies. Um, I will try to remember to put my link to my link tree below and you can find the conversion there. Keep in mind I haven't 
finished stitching it, but um, you know, if you if you want it, it's there for you. Um, Jen Lee of Quirks and Stitches has also done an overdye cotton conversion, um, and I know she shares hers openly too, so that's another one to check out. But let me show you my whip. I'm stitching this one on 40 count lakeside lin linens and vintage wood smoke. <laughs> so big and it's so pretty and I love it I am working oh my gosh those leaves you guys there's so many leaves and they're like you know it's all different colors but they're gonna look amazing um, when they're done but yeah I still have a lot to go um, but I do enjoy the process I enjoy working on it and I'm gonna be so happy this is on my wall one day too I think I will have to have this one I'm We'll go probably do professional framing on this one, so we're not there yet. But I do work on it fairly often, so that's good. So yeah, I love that piece. And um, last one is a new start. I just started this one like maybe a day or two ago. I have wanted to stitch this one for a long time. I wanted um like a summer or spring piece. I I just watched my friend Lori Textilist, and she makes me want to stitch all the spring stuff that, you know, usually I'm go towards fall, but she always has like the cutest stuff. The sable stitchers showed a bunch of adorable things. Um, and so I wanted a new start. And this one's I would consider more like summer. Um, I will show you a few that were backups that I also debated, but I pulled the threads for this years ago and I've, they've been sitting with the chart and like it's time. Anyway get to it Olivia tomato harvest sewing bag by Stacy Nash let me just take this out I'm showing you a lot of reflections I just think this is so cute um, it's on gunmetal from Meeks Dye Works which is like a dark gray but I've decided to stitch it on a dark blue um, I don't have a ton to show you um, but I'm stitching it on mystic from picture this plus I had a piece of 40 count that it would fit on but um, just so hard to see. Um, picture this plus fabric tends to be a little tighter because of the dyeing process. Um, so I'm using a 36 count with one strand and I think that's going to work fine. And, um, and I'm able to see it a little easier. So I started on the bottom here, the flowers and yeah, that's where I'm at. I think it's going to be so cute. You can't see much yet. It's <laughs> just some green. Um, but yeah, I'm doing that. I'll show you the, the threads. There we go. They're like some the fun, bright colors on the dark blue background. I think it's just gonna be a lot of fun. And I have this in my coffee and eggs bag that I made. <laughs> Inspired by coffee and eggs by RC Housewife. I made my sister one, and so I made myself one too. Um, okay. Wow. I hope I didn't rush through that too much. But I have more to show you because... I knew I would run out of things. Okay, well, I mentioned um, there was like a few other contenders that are ones I've been wanting to do for a long time um, that are spring, summerish, and they could get started. You never know. I'm crazy. I'm not. I'm not. I'm very uh, predictable. But um, one of them I've been wanting to stitch for so long, and Maddie and I talk about stitching this all the time and never do. It's Old Mustard Moon from Not Forgotten Farm. I'm going to take this one out of the plastic too because I'm in a generous mood today. This is my birthday. Okay. Here we go. I would like to stitch this without the top stuff or the bottom stuff. I just want the scene. Um, and the clouds and house are done in a gray, but I kind of want to do a light blue gray color. So we'll see. Um, I think years ago, I remember seeing someone on Instagram had stitched it on murky fabric. I don't know. I've since heard people saying that's a country sampler conversion. I don't know. Um, but it always looks great on the murky fabric. Um, I don't know if that's what I'll stitch it on or not, but it's always been there in the back of my mind. But yes, would love to stitch this. The, um, another one that I'm considering is Not Forgotten Farm. The picture is not very good, um, but this is Summerfield. They're just so cute. And I kind of enjoy that Not Forgotten Farm has these <laughs> hard to see pictures because then I pull the colors out. Like this one has like maybe 15 DMC colors in it. So I'm very curious to see how this one would come out. Um, if any of you watch that show on HBO Gentleman Jack, it reminds me of, her hat reminds me of that. Um, 
But anyway, so that was a contender. And then the third one was Sparrow Creek by Carriage House Samplings. Um, I have the M the four MPIs and um, I just, they're, they're colors I might not normally choose, but I think in this piece, they're just put together so well. It was, you know, Kathy Barrick. And it's outlined in this dark green and um, it just looks really enjoyable to stitch. So those three I am leaving out in case I decide to start them, but I do have a nice, a new start. I do like to get like a chunk of progress on it. So I'm not going to be starting them in the next few days or anything because I just started something. Um, so those are my in consideration pieces. Uh, next, I would like to show you a beautiful gift that I received from my friend Rebecca from Hedgerow Stitching. Um, Rebecca has had a channel for probably longer than I have even. And um, we've been longtime Flosstube friends and we met through Flosstube and, um, you know, my long-term plan is to go live with Rebecca eventually in Cornwall, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Anyway, um, Rebecca has been um, reproducing samplers, and she's been selling them as PDFs. And um, for the first time, she has done printed booklets, and she sent me this beautiful chart, Harriet Elizabeth Coney. And she sent that to me as a gift, and it's beautiful. And now her and I are working together, and I'm selling them in my shop, which I'm very excited about. And um, yeah, and I love how she did those smalls. I can see stitching some of those smalls and putting them in frames. And I just love a brick house. So I was very thankful for that. Thank you so much, Rebecca, if you see this. Uh, charts that I've, so I guess we're in the haul section. We're in the haul section, but it's not huge. So um, I, this I bought in December after I saw Christy from Daisy K Primitives was showing hers. Um, this is Christmas stocking stuffers from the Needle Love Company. Yeah. If you haven't seen Christy's video, it, it, she shows these. They're so freaking cute. Like, I have to. Ha I just got to. I have to. I really need to make a few of these. I don't know. There's just something about them. They're adorable. And I don't know. I like having um, ornaments that are different shapes. And these would be perfect. So, love those. Um, I got my last installment. I was in the... Um, Scattered Seed Samplers Club last year, and the third installment was Sweeter Than Honey Pin Keep. It's beautiful. The um, designer is a very nice lady, and I reached out to her, and I was like, I never received my last package, and she tracked it. She's like, you did. You know, she's like super nice, like maybe look around, and you know, maybe it gets lost in the shuffle. I was like, that is definitely my household right now at the holidays, and sure enough, yeah, I had it. Um, so she was very patient with me. And it's all kitted up beautifully, and I need to just stitch it. I don't have a lot of things kitted. I have plenty of supplies, don't get me wrong, but I tend not to combine them into kits that much, and I don't buy a lot of kits. So when things are kitted, I'm like, you just gotta stitch it. I just gotta stitch it. Um, it's all ready for me. Like, why wouldn't I? And then for Market, Vibrant Flowers from Kathy Barrick. I love this. I was this close to starting it, but then started the Stacey Nash instead because I'm like, I have a lot of patterns in my stash I want to stitch, and this just came out, so just chill. Um, but this is very fun. I am not a pink person, and this is a pink house, but Kathy Barrick, you know? So I, I might change the background color to something different, um, but we'll see. It's I love doing that when it works out, but it's a, it always feels risky because sometimes, you know, it doesn't work out and you get through you stitch it for a while and then you're like oh no I've made a horrible mistake but I do think I'll risk it for this piece so those are my that's my chart haul for the last few months and then I have this beautiful package from Cedar River Linen Cedar River Linen came out with new colors and I bought that quarter of each one it was indulgent and I have no regrets so this one is, I know you've probably seen these, but still, Coffee Stain. Maple Bar. I would love to eat a maple bar with some coffee. And Spindrift. All three are beautiful. Um, since I'm working on Overcast for the houses, I know how much I like Cedar River Linen, the feel and how it 
just stitching on it is extremely pleasant. I really love, um, for me, this is like the perfect amount of modeling where it's, it's subtle. It's not just a solid color, but it's not crazy. And this is gorgeous. And now I can put it in my stash and hoard it now that I've shown it and hopefully use it. So that was the haul. All right, well, are we okay? Two minutes. All right, so um, just I was thinking today um, something to do in my video. So I have not, okay, so if you're fairly new to stitching, when we say FFO, we're referring to fully finished object. So you finish stitching something and it's a finish, but it's not an FFO yet because you haven't turned it into like a framed piece or a pin cushion or whatnot. Um, so I find that I usually will do um, FFOing in spurts. Like I will get inspired and I'm like sit down and I'll actually do the work to do that. I, you know, I prefer stitching to uh, fully finishing. But um, for over a year now, I have not fully finished anything that I have finished stitching, which is kind of a shame, but it's just the way life's been. I have not been inspired. I've just, um, I just, I love the process of stitching and I want all of these fully things fully finished and up in my house, but I just haven't gotten there yet. Um, so I've been putting them all away in a drawer um, and I don't call it the drawer of shame because I'm not ashamed of them, but I would like to, um, to get these things displayed in my home. I have not gone through the drawer in a while and um, so I just pulled the drawer out and I thought I would show you the things and I would show, remind myself of the things and hopefully that will inspire me to um, to get FFOing. So I am just going to start. So I have a drawer. I, I had a couple things that I've grabbed from another drawer. I think a couple of things might actually be my sister's but we'll just as we go along, I'll show you. So I didn't, these aren't like ironed or anything like that because they, they've been shoved in the drawer. So this one is Spot the Horse from Carriage House Samplings. Um, I stitched this one, I believe on Havana from Weeks Dye Works in the called for MPIs. I love this piece. I loved stitching this piece. I think I stitched this start to finish and he's super cute. Next one, this is Kathy Barrick, Bluebird in a Cherry Tree. I stitched this in the Call for MPIs. Forgetting the name of the fabric off the top of my head, uh, Seraphim Fabrics. Um, it's the called for on the pattern. I just used um, an even weave instead of linen. That was also super fun. It comes with the design for a pin cushion of that bird, which I also would like to do, but have not done yet. So, oh, I need, need to do some framing. This is another Carriage House Samplings, from back when Kathy Barrick was designing, and it is called Enchanted. Um, again, called for MPIs. I forget the linen. I'm probably written down somewhere. It's a 40 count, though. And I stitched this with a few of my friends. This is another Kathy Barrick. Um, this is Esther. I love this one so much. Um, I actually have her pinned and laced um, because I, I took the, um, it says like December 25th something on the top. I took that out and this will fit by an eight, in an 8 by 10 frame. So I am ready to frame her. I think I have a frame. I just have to paint it. Um, I also stitched this in the call for MPIs, though I think the tree is charted in a brownish color and I switched it for the green that was in here. And um, this one is on, it's either on Havana from Weeks Dye Works or Autumn Gold from Lakeside Linens. They both are kind of similar. That was a fun stitch. That's a big ass sheet. This is, oh, okay, so my, all right, let me tell you about my sister, in case you don't know my sister Elena. Um, she also stitches, but she hasn't stitched as much in the last few years. Um, she is stitching right now. She was super inspired by Coffee and Eggs by Artsy Housewife, and she is working on that. But she had a bunch of whips, um, in her stash, and, um, I took those in. I, I took those from her, and, um, I've been storing them in my house. She lives in a small apartment in San Francisco. Um, I live out in the suburbs in a bigger house and I said I'll just take those to kind of relieve the stress and then she was over here the other day and I dug them out and we kind of went through them and um, 
So anyway, this, um, so also she, you should know that she never fully finishes anything on her own. So either, I think she's, she's had a few pieces that have been professionally framed and then, um, most of the rest of the stuff I end up finishing for her. So, um, this is, oh, okay. So this was a modern folk embroidery. I think it might've been a yearly Sal and she did this, this top thing, the top one, um, but she didn't finish it. And she likely won't, so um, I have to figure out what I'm going to do with that for her. So, not too inspiring right there, but... Um, okay, this is another one where um, it's kind of an abandoned project. I think this... It's beautiful, though. So, I think there's like a bunch of the... I, there's several of these cups. It's like a Christmas piece. It was a European designer. I don't know if it was curry about a curry, um, but she finished this one, and so I'm gonna try to make something out of it for her. Looks like she stitched it on. Picture this plus legacy, 28 count, and it's really pretty. So I just need to think of what I'm, what I'm gonna do with that. Oh. <laughs> This was, uh, okay, so Prairie Schooler Alphabet. Um, I decided to stitch the alphabet, but I only got A and B done and decided, eh. It's, I did it two over two on 36 count, which is how I stitched back then. Since then, I, I've been using the um, sewing method, using just one strand when I stitch, and I've just gotten to the point where I just much prefer that. Um, I did convert the colors from DMC to over dyed cottons. Um, and I just don't think I'm going to go back to this. I really love the B for Blackbirds, and so I'm not going to frog this piece. Um, but I was thinking if I could find a way to do something like that. Or make something that's like both sides. I don't know. But that's in the drawer. Oh, this is a small that I randomly stitched around Christmas time that I would like to make into a little ornament. This is from Not Forgotten Farm. It's part of a pattern which designed a couple years ago, and I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but just ask me if you want to know. Um, yeah, I can't remember. It's like Merriest something. I don't know. Anyway, this is one of my big finishes of last year. This is When the Calling Birds Sing, from Exemplars from the Heart. Um, I did my own conversion to overdyes. Um, it's very a little crazy and random, but I did post that conversion for anyone who wanted it. Um, and I stitched it on 40 count platinum from Zweigart. And it's very fun and I need to get it framed. I have no, I just have no idea how to frame it, but I will do that. And this was the first kit that came last year for scattered seed samplers. Love this one. Friends of the Heart from Plum Street Samplers. Stitch this one with some friends. Um, it's gorgeous. I just need the right frame. I uh, might possibly get this one framed. So that was a pleasure to stitch. Oh, this is a great one for this time of year. B is for Bunny from Lottie Da. I think he's so cute. Uh, this is uh, stitched in DMC, and this one I stitched on a 46 count from Extra Design. There's a big B on it in the pattern, like the letter B, that I replaced. Um, I got rid of it, and um, oh, and in the pattern he's holding like a basket of eggs. He's wearing a basket of eggs. I took it off just so this could be more spring than Easter, um, but I really, I think that one's adorable. Oof. I'm we'll getting to some old ones. This is Kindred Spirits by the Primitive Needle. And I was in the process of doing something with it. Um, I'm putting it on this fabric, this homespun, but not entirely sure what I was going to do. If I was going to make, and maybe I was going to make like a flat hanging or um, I don't know. But it looks like I was going to sew this to the fabric. Right now it's just pinned. So I'll have to decide what I want to do. Oh, 
this I think was you maybe you and I and friends uh, called black crow and it's just a cute black crow this is not forgotten farm turkey trot um, this is from a book called autumn at not forgotten farm love that mustard house I need to figure out what I'm gonna do with that but stitch in DMC and this is my um, Brenda Gervais um, gosh what's it called it's an older design and this is just part of it um, you can see so I did it on this I did it on like 32 count with a one strand because it's a picture of this plus it's so thick um, and then I stained it with like walnut crystals and I just have no idea what to do with it and I'm forgetting the name of the pattern I should have designed I should have stitched the whole pattern and it's a really cool pattern um, but I just did her and she's still super cute though I just need to find a cute way to finish her um, and I'm sorry I can't remember the name off the top of my head but if you need it just let me know and I will look it up this is another beautiful not forgotten farm this is pomegranate house I love this why have I not framed this um, the pad I did make a couple changes in the pattern. This doesn't finish at the bottom like it does here. No, maybe it doesn't finish at the top. There's like an angel, I think, on the top here that I left out and then replaced with that. Looks like this is something random that I sewed. I need to make that into something. This is Peacocks and Pumpkins by The Good Housewife. Um, stitch this on a dark gray. I think it's a, maybe a fabric by Stephanie. Stand dye fabrics by Stephanie. Um, I stitched this, I think, mostly in the called for DMC, except the peacocks were like a greenish color, and I switched it out to an overdyed cotton, and I think it was called Peacock from Gentle Arts. Super cute. Need to frame that or do something with it. Oh, oh, Olivia. <laughs> when when Halloween from Hawker and Hollow came Halloween at Hawker and Hollow came out, I stitched the first block. Um, I stitched it on this crazy blue fabric, two strands over two on 36 count. Like I mentioned before, it's not really how I stitch anymore, and the fabric choice was a bold one that didn't quite work out. Um, so I would love to stitch this again one day, but um, in the meantime, I have this one block finished. I had this other one started, and I've frogged a good amount of it. Um, but I thought this I could FFO this into something. Okay, and then the last ones are my sister's. These are her finishes that I need to do something with. She had stitched me this um, O, so I need to incorporate that into something. It's very pretty. And then she had stitched. This is actually modern folk embroidery. Um, I might be holding it upside down. I apologize if I am. It's the Japanese alphabet. <laughs> Look at the colors. This is my sister, not me. You can tell. Um, it's like pink on pink. It's very cool. Um, she would like it at Fafode. I don't really know how, what to do with it. Maybe if I can get a frame, like a black frame or something. It's pretty. And then these two, uh, Samantha Purdy. She's on Etsy and I love her and Elena has stitched a few pieces they're adorable um, they're just so cute and I need to find the right thing to do with them that's one of them there's another one and there's another one so that's everything in the drawer of pride we'll say <laughs> um, and I, yeah, I would love to FFO them eventually, but um, it's not a hurry. I'll get there. Just enjoy stitching them for now. Um, but I would like them up in my home. So anyway, thank you for indulging me and going through those with me. And I hope that all of you are doing well. I'm doing all right. And um, yeah, that's about it. That's all I've got today. But thank you so much, everyone. And I again, I hope you're doing great. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.